Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 58 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm going to break down the randomizer MIDI effects plugin and I'll show you a few examples of what I like to use it for. And the randomizer does exactly what it sounds like. It randomizes MIDI events. You can randomize things like notes, velocity, and other MIDI events, as well as MIDI CCs, or you can actually learn MIDI controllers as well. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Are you looking for a better way to collaborate on your music projects? Look no further than Boombox.io. Boombox's audio file commenting and collaboration tools allow musicians, musical artists, bands, and music producers to easily share files and provide time-stamped production notes and feedback. Upload single tracks, multi-tracks, or stems, invite collaborators to your project, and draw up contracts with their splits feature. Say goodbye to endless email chains and say hello to seamless collaboration with boombox.io. Sign up for a free account today and you'll get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I've got the randomizer pulled up on this piano track here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just bypass the plugin for now. And if we look at the MIDI on this track, you'll see that everything is the same velocity. Everything's using a velocity of 80 and everything's perfectly quantized to the grid. So this is a pretty robotic sounding piano recording. So one of the things you can use the randomizer for is to randomize the velocity of notes and give your programmed MIDI recordings a bit more of a human element by slightly randomizing the velocities. So up at the top, you can select the event type. So I'm gonna select velocity. The input range sets the range of values that will have the randomization applied to it. So let's say that you wanted to randomize velocities above 75, but you didn't want to randomize velocities lower than 75, you could totally do that. Or if I wanted to randomize velocities lower than say 59, but velocities above 59 would not be randomized. So that's what the input range does. And we'll play around with this with some other parameters in a bit. The random slider just adjusts the amount of randomization, the sort of depth of the randomization. If you set this to 127 with velocity, you're gonna get random velocities all over the place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just option click on this weight slider here. And I'll also option click on the offset and I'll show you what I mean. So we're getting some notes that are just way too loud and other notes that are way too soft. So what we can do is we can pull down the randomization and make this more of a subtle effect. And then what you can do is you can apply weight to the randomization. You can say, okay, I want the randomization to favor the higher velocities, or I want the randomization to favor the lower velocities. So with the slider over to the left, we'll hear more random lower velocities. And if I pull this over to the right, this will favor louder velocities or higher velocities. So for this piano part, I think favoring the lower velocities is better. And then you can set an output offset. So let's say that you like the randomization, but maybe everything's a little too quiet or everything's a little too loud. You can add an offset to that value. So if I pull this up, the overall velocities are gonna be higher. They're just gonna be shifted higher. And if I pull this down, this is gonna shift the velocities lower. So 
So if you're going to use this for velocity to try to humanize a performance that's all done at the same velocity, a little goes a long way. You don't really have to use really big randomization values. You can use smaller values and randomize each note just a little bit. Obviously, you want to make this sound more human, but you also don't want to randomize the values so much that it makes it sound even less human. Now, one last set of controls I want to show you here before I move on to another example are the seed and probability controls. You can find these by opening up this extra tab at the bottom of the randomizer. Now, the probability is fairly straightforward. This is the probability of each note being randomized based on the controls that are up here. So if you set this to 100%, basically every single note is going to get some sort of randomization. As you pull this down, less and less notes will be randomized. However, one of the problems with using a randomizer is you might like the way it sounds in one playthrough, but then in another playthrough, it randomizes completely different notes. So for example, with the seed set to random, if I bounce this track and then bounce it a second time, I'm gonna get two different randomized performances. The seed allows you to specify a starting point for the randomization. And this is a value between one and 50. And what you can do is you set this to whatever seed you like. It's just basically random. You just pick one. There's not one that's better than another. And you listen to it. And if you like that particular seed, you just keep it on that seed. And the randomization will be the same every single time you play back that track. So it preserves the randomization in each playthrough so that when you bounce the track, you know that the randomization will be consistent each time. Okay, now that you know what the randomizer controls do, let's explore some other musical examples. One really important thing about the randomizer that I just want to make very clear is that the randomizer does not create new MIDI data or MIDI values like the LFO or the envelope within the modulator plugin. The randomizer can only randomize existing MIDI data. So for example, here on this pad instrument, I've got the modulator here using both the LFO and the envelope. The LFO is controlling a pulsing sound, basically just controlling the volume of the synthesizer of the retro synth. And then the envelope is creating a slow filter sweep with the mod wheel, and the mod wheel is paired to the filter inside of RetroSynth. Now, if I were to add the randomizer after the modulator, and I set the event type to the mod wheel, you can also learn parameters as well. So if you select Learn MIDI, and then move that controller on your MIDI controller, it will learn that controller. I just moved my mod wheel, but you can do this with things like faders and knobs as well. So that's CC20, scroll back up to the top, learn MIDI, I'll move another one, that's CC23. So you can learn MIDI CCs the same way you've done in other MIDI effects plugins, but for now I'm just gonna switch to mod wheel. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take these mod wheel values that the envelope is generating and it's going to randomize them. Now with the randomization like completely open like this, we're gonna get some pretty wide values. But if I wanted a less drastic effect, I could pull back the randomization. Again, I could skew it toward lower values or higher values and I could apply an offset. Now, I wouldn't say that was a particularly nice sounding effect, but you can hear that the modulation wheel values are being randomized by the randomizer. But what I was talking about earlier with the randomizer not able to generate new MIDI data, if I turn off the envelope, the modulation wheel is not going to be moved anymore and therefore it's not going to generate any more values. So even if I set the randomization to the highest value in the randomizer, 
the randomizer is not going to randomize or, or create new data for the mod wheel. Because there is no mod wheel data. The mod wheel is not being used here. It's just been set in a fixed position. Now, if I hit play again and I move my modulation wheel around manually, you will hear the randomization applied to it because I'm creating modulation wheel data by moving the controller around during playback. So if you're expecting the randomizer to be able to pair to a MIDI CC and then randomly move around that control, you're actually using the wrong MIDI effects plugin. If that's what you wanna do, you're better off using the LFO and setting this to the random waveform. And then you just set the mod wheel or whatever uh, MIDI controller or effect you want to randomize. And that parameter will then be randomized by the LFO. So I just wanted to make that very clear that the randomizer does not generate any new MIDI data. It simply randomizes existing MIDI data. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's jump over to another example. So because the randomizer does not generate its own MIDI data, you'll often find yourself using it in conjunction with other MIDI effects, especially the modulator, as I demonstrated in the last example. But here's another example. So let's say that we've got a synth lead that's got an arpeggiator on it. It sounds like this. And let's say that I want the note length to be adjusted by the modulation wheel. So I can go over to the controller tab in the arpeggiator and I can assign the modulation wheel to control the note length. So now if I move the mod wheel on my MIDI controller, you'll see that that indeed does control the note length but let's automate this so I don't have to move it manually. What I'll do instead is I'll load up the modulator and this is gonna be loaded before the arpeggiator. So the arpeggiator is last, the modulator is first. And then what I'm gonna do is select the mod wheel and this LFO is now controlling the position of the mod wheel. Now let's slow this way down. Let's do like two bars, just like so. So now you can see that the note length is being controlled by the LFO via the mod wheel. But if we wanted to apply even more variety to this, we could throw the randomizer in between the modulator and the arpeggiator. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then what I'll do is in the randomizer, I'll select the mod wheel. And what you'll see is now the note length is going crazy because the LFO is generating the MIDI data for the mod wheel. The randomizer is randomizing it and then the arpeggiator is receiving it. That's a bit much for my taste. I think I'd prefer something that's a bit more subtle. What I'd probably do is pull down the randomization quite a bit so that the control is essentially still moving uh, down and up at the shape of this triangle wave, but it's just being randomized as it's moving around. So this just gives the note length a bit more variety and some random variations. Another cool thing you can do with the randomizer is you can create some randomized detuning effects, and you can also use this to create some stereo detuning effects that sort of thicken the tone of whatever instrument you're working with. Now, some instruments do have like a, a detuning effect built in, others have a stereo detuning bit built in, but the randomizer allows you to apply this effect to any instrument, regardless of whether it has analog detuning or not. So what I've done is I've created three electric piano tracks here. The first one is just the stock setting and it's panned center. On the second one, I've panned this over to the left I've added the randomizer, and in the randomizer, I'm selecting the tuning 
MIDI event. And I'm randomizing at 42, and I'm sort of skewing this over into uh, the lower detuning values. And then on the next track down, I'm panning this over to the right. And in this randomizer, I'm using all the same settings pretty much, uh, except that the weight is set to positive 49. So this is skewing toward the higher values. So what's happening here is the first track is just gonna be the electric piano as is. The second track is gonna be over to the left and detuning a bit more in the lower values and the, the lower detuning. So you can hear that's a little bit flat on several of those notes. And then the third track is the exact opposite. The notes are gonna be a little bit sharp. And then if you put all three of these in a track stack, so I'll go ahead and add these to a summing stack, you can actually record your MIDI directly to the track stack. So you can just arm the track stack and it'll play all three of these instruments together. And if you wanna hear less of the detuned voices and more of the dry signal, you just pull back the two electric piano tracks that have the randomizer on it. So there's a crazy number of things you can do with the randomizer and the other MIDI effects and logic as well. But I wanna show you one more example. And this one is definitely a bit out there, but you can use it to generate random chords for ambient sound design. So for this, I'm gonna be using this in conjunction with the chord trigger and the transposer MIDI effects plugins. And I know we haven't fully covered the transposer yet. We'll eventually get to it very soon. So all I have on this track right now is the stock electric piano with the stock patch. I've got the transposer and randomizer turned off. And the first MIDI effects plugin I have in the signal chain is the chord trigger. I'm going to go ahead and bring this in. And I've selected the pop right hand presets. So now I can play one key on my MIDI controller and trigger various diatonic chords. Now, if I add the randomizer after this and I select note number as my event type, this is effectively going to randomize each note in each chord I play. And I've got the randomization setting set pretty low. Now you're thinking, okay, Josh has lost his mind. That sounds horrible. If you add the transposer after the randomizer, you can essentially scale quantize each of those randomized chords by selecting a root note and a scale. So for this, I'm using the minor pentatonic. So now each of those random chords are actually being scale quantized to only use these five notes, A, G, E, D, and C. And because it's random, every time you play a note repeatedly, you're gonna get a completely different chord. Now, this isn't gonna be very useful in like a compositional context, but for sound design, if you were to add some heavy time-based effects or reverbs or delays, here I'm using the Valhalla Shimmer plugin, and I've got the mix on the reverb at 100%. Check this out. So I'm essentially creating these like tone clusters that have been scale quantized and randomized 
and just sending them through some really heavy reverb for some ambient sound design. So go crazy with the randomizer plugin. Again, because it doesn't generate any MIDI data on its own, it's best used in conjunction with other MIDI effects plugins. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.